Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the fifth lecture session on uh, convective heat transfer. In the previous uh, lecture session, we had started solving some numerical examples and we solved three problems on uh, external flow forced convective heat transfer. And all the three problems uh, were based on velocity and thermal boundary layer. We saw how to calculate uh, the boundary layer thicknesses, uh, parameters like drag force, uh, wall shear stress, mass flow rate inside the boundary layer, uh, thermal boundary layer thickness, etc. So in this class, we will continue uh, by solving few more uh, typical numerical examples, which are also very important uh, from your examination, semester and examination point of view. After that, we will proceed to internal flow forced convective heat transfer. Okay, so let us start uh, solving some more examples. Let me take the first problem for today. So let me read out the problem. <coughs> so the problem goes like this. A flat plate is kept in an air stream at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. The velocity of air is 3 meter per second. The plate measures 50 into 20 centimeters squared. So that is 50 centimeter length and 20 centimeter width and is maintained at a uniform temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. So the plate temperature is ISO, uh, said to be uniform, so it's an isothermal, uh, it's in isothermal condition, so of 100 degrees Celsius, okay. Compare the heat loss from the plate when the air flow is parallel to 50 centimeter side and parallel to 20 meter side. So you have two cases in this problem. Case 1 is when air will flow parallel to 50 centimeter side. In case 2, you have to just reverse it. Uh, such that it flows parallel to 20 centimeter side. Also calculate the percentage change in heat trans heat lost in rate of heat transfer. So it's a very straightforward problem. So let us go to the solution of this. Let me take up the whiteboard. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So let, let me take the given conditions here. Let me take it up as case one. Flow parallel to 50 centimeter side. First, let us take this uh, problem. So we are given a flat plate. So this is 50. Let me call this as L 50 centimeter. So this width, this is 20 centimeter. So let me call this as W. So there is air which is flowing like this, air. So the free stream velocity is given. So it is 3 meter per second. And temperature is also given, 20 degree Celsius. The wall temperature is constant. So this is Cw, which is equal to 100 degree Celsius. Okay. So you are supposed to calculate what is the heat loss and compare it uh, with case 2. Okay, let us proceed very quickly. So what were the steps? If you recall, step 1 is to get the fluid properties. Fluid properties at what temperature? Film temperature, Tf which is equal to T infinity plus T wall by 2. So which in this case will come to around 60 degrees Celsius. Now what you will do, you will take your data handbook and you will note down the 
properties of air at 60 degrees Celsius. So uh, I have the handbook which is of 7th edition. So in page number 34, you will find properties of air. So the properties there for 60 degrees Celsius, you can list out 060 kg per meter cube. Uh, dynamic viscosity is 20.10 into 10 power minus 6 kg per meter second or newton second per meter square okay then Prandtl number is 0.696 and thermal conductivity is 0 0.02896 okay so watt per meter kelvin so these are the properties of air that you can note down at 60 degree Celsius from your data book. Now, what is step two? Step one is done. Step two is calculation of Reynolds number. Reynolds number. So in this case, you should take the characteristic length as 50 centimeter. So Reynolds number at L. So this is given by rho u infinity into L by mu. So in this case, L equals 50 centimeter. Please convert all the units to their SI units, 0.5 meter. Okay, calculate the Reynolds number. Okay, so if you do the calculation, so let me find my value. Okay, it is 7.91 into 10 raised to 4. Okay, 10 raised to Four. This is four. Now, is it, is your thing done? No. You should specify whether the flow is laminar or turbulent. So only then your calculation of Reynolds number will will hold some substance. Okay. So since this is less than the critical Reynolds number for flow over a flat plate, which is five into ten power five, so you can state that it's laminar. It's a laminar boundary layer boundary layer flow laminar boundary layer flow okay so then what is step 3 step 3 is to find the nusselt number nusselt number using a correlation actually since this is laminar we have already derived this in the class we have the um, uh, energy integral solution so i'll just use it in your handbook so you will find the same formula in page numbers 113 comma 114 okay so this is the reference to you in the handbook so nusselt number with respect to l the average value is two times the local value two times the local value so this will be 0.664 reynolds number to the power of half Prandtl number to the power of 1 by 3. This was the uh, solution that we obtained in the class. So you can just, uh, if you remember it, you can use it. Or else you, all, uh, you always have the reference of the handbook. So you can just uh, copy the correlation from the handbook. Okay. So now when you substitute your uh, Reynolds number and Prandtl number for the uh, fluid given, so your Nusselt number, the average value for this case will be 165.517. Is this okay? Yes. So this Nusselt number is nothing but average heat transfer coefficient into length by K of the fluid. Okay. So this implies the average heat transfer coefficient is around 9.585 watt per meter square Kelvin. Is this clear? Yes. I don't vouch for the numerical values. Please use your calculator and calculate. So I will be highlighting the procedure. The sequence of steps are very important. 
uh, you try to calculate it as per the steps which are followed in the solution to the problem okay so once you find the heat transfer coefficient value the last step that you need to perform is to calculate the heat transfer rate so let us calculate that so heat transfer rate q that is what we are interested in and it is also what is asked in the problem to compare the heat transfer rates okay so since this is case one let me call this as q1 so this is nothing but h l okay into area of the plate surface area t wall minus t infinity because t wall is greater than t infinity so you have to just substitute this so therefore erase these things Q1 will be, this is equal to, oh, let me find the value, 76.68 watts. So this is Q1. Now let us proceed to case 2. So what is case 2? Flow parallel to 20 centimeter side this is case 2 so what you are doing is you are effectively changing the air flow rate to this direction so this is case 2 this is case 1 so here almost all the calculation is just a repetition only thing is you have to change the length to 20 centimeter now so you repeat the calculation and change the length to 20 centimeter so i'll just write very quickly the reynolds number uh, for this case 2 will be 3.164 into 10 power 4 again this is laminar this is obvious because when you decrease the length reynolds number is proportional to the characteristic length obviously this will reduce so it is still laminar then the Nusselt number value, the average value is 104. You will use the same correlation. So that's why I'm not repeating all the calculations. So please do it on your own. I'll erase all this. So Nusselt number is 104.67. So this implies your heat transfer coefficient average value will be 15.156 watt per meter square kelvin since the leading edge is longer now so you will have more contact and hence you will have a higher heat transfer coefficient okay even though the surface areas are same due to the orientation of the surface so you are having this advantage now the heat lost for the second case heat loss rate is again given by the same formula Tw minus T infinity so this will come to around 121.248 watts okay so therefore what is the change uh, in heat transfer so Q2 minus Q1 okay so this will give you the change in heat transfer the percentage increase will be q2 minus q1 by q1 into 100 so whatever you get you calculate and you just express it okay so this is the solution to this problem uh, the approach is you have to use the same steps again find the fluid properties at the film temperature calculate the reynolds number comment on whether the uh, boundary layer is a laminar one or a turbulent one then proceed to the calculation of Nusselt number using an appropriate correlation depending on your Reynolds number so these are the steps that you have to follow after you get the Nusselt number obviously you will calculate heat transfer coefficient and easily using heat transfer coefficient and Newton's law 
you can directly get the uh, heat transfer rate so this is the approach to solving this problem okay so now let us proceed to one more numerical yeah so let me read this problem so the problem goes like this air flows over a flat plate 0 0.4 meter wide and 0.75 meter long okay at 30 degrees Celsius the temperature of uh, air is given that is the free stream temperature is given to you with a velocity of 20 meter per second so once you get uh, flow velocities free stream velocities which are very high like in this case of 20 meter per second there is an additional calculation that you should always do so i will highlight it when i go into that when we solve the problem determine the heat transfer from the surface of the plate assuming that the plate is maintained at 90 degree celsius so with regards to the plates condition nothing has changed it is still uh, given as an isothermal condition only only thing here is the uh, velocity so we will take care of it okay 0 0.4 into 0 0.75 meter long so let me again switch over to the whiteboard so let us write the problem domain so you have a flat plate okay so this is 0.75 meter which is the length width is 0.4 meter here is the fluid again u infinity is 20 so a very high velocity of flow t infinity is 30 30 degree celsius the wall temperature is 90 degree celsius okay so you have to calculate what is the heat transfer rate so this is the problem q is equal to what okay. the approach doesn't change the approach still remains uh, same so let us first start with step one what is step one if you recall fluid properties fluid properties at tf what is tf t wall plus t infinity by 2 so this is the film temperature calculate this so for this problem also it is 60 degrees Celsius I have chosen it uh, such that the effort for me is reduced again you go to page number 34 imagine if they give you some other fluid like let's say they give you a liquid metal so you have to whenever they give a liquid metal you should use a correlation appropriate to a liquid metal okay so that is present in the handbook so whenever they give fluids like uh, liquid metals let's say sodium potassium alloy you have its properties in page number 33 of your handbook you can just refer to those properties and write sometimes in the examination what they will do is they will themselves give the uh, list of properties in the problem so that everybody gets consistent answers so or when the fluid uh, properties are not available in the handbook so they will give the properties to you okay so you just use those properties and solve the problem is this clear yeah for this problem also uh, let me sorry yeah uh, the density value that we have noted so 1.060 i'll write this quickly kg per meter cube mu is 20.10 10 per minus 6 newton second per meter squared or kg per meter second so i am deliberately writing uh, newton second per meter squared in the previous problem i wrote kg per meter second all units are same mm, to make you comfortable with these units that's all Randall number is 0 0.696 and thermal conductivity is 0 0.2896 okay 
watt per meter kelvin yeah what is step 2 step 2 is to calculate reynolds number what is the characteristic dimension you will take length and he has not given anything you should take the length itself so let me calculate this this is rho u infinity l by mu so where l equals 0.75 meter so on calculation so you will get the value as 7.91 into 10 power 5 what is your comment obviously this is greater than 5 into 10 raised to 5 so the flow is turbulent or the boundary layer is turbulent turbulent boundary layer okay then what you should do so once you have a turbulent boundary layer and also when the velocities are very high you should check for the critical length so this step is extra so i'll highlight this step so this is an extra step so let me use a different color pen yeah check for critical length this is very crucial i'll tell you why critical length what is this check for critical length so you know that the critical reynolds number is 5 into 10 power 5 now you should find at what distance along the plate your flow actually undergoes the transition from laminar to turbulent so if you know the critical reynolds number so which is which in this case for flow over a flat plate is 5 into 10 raised to 5 the critical length will be xc by mu so you know rho u infinity and mu on substitution you will get xc as 0.474 meters okay so now what is the utility of this value now if you compare this with the actual length scale of the problem that you have considered now actual length of the uh, problem that is l equals 0.75 meter you can see that this is not substantially smaller than this so what is the implication so you cannot consider that the flow has become turbulent from the leading edge of the plate so that means to say if you take the length of the plate if this is 0 0.75 a large part of it around 0.5 meter is actually laminar this is laminar and from here it undergoes the transition to turbulent boundary layer so what i mean to say is you cannot neglect this length so if you consider that the entire boundary layer is turbulent and solve the problem so you will introduce some error uh, in your calculation so what you should do is you should check for this critical length if imagine for the sake of discussion you got xc as around uh, something as 0 0.02 meter so when you compare it with this value this is very small so l is very very large compared to critical length so you can consider that the entire boundary layer is turbulent and use a completely turbulent correlation and solve the problem is this clear for this particular problem since that is not the case so let us uh, take a correlation which is appropriate uh, to our condition okay so to find this correlation so you can go to your data handbook and take up page number 115 so if you go to page number 115 so let me write the correlation for you i'll erase this So from your data book, I'll write the page number, page number 115, 115. So you have equation 
1.5.2 equation 1.5.2 laminar turbulent constant wall temperature the uh, correlation is called like that so average correlation uh, Nusselt number for this particular case is Prandtl number to the power of 0.333 into 0 0.037 Reynolds number based on length to the power of 0 0.8 minus 871 so this is the correlation let me erase this sketch I hope it is not required anymore yeah so this is the Nusselt number correlation so you have to use this correlation to calculate the Nusselt number value. So I'll leave it to you as an assignment to calculate this. You calculate the Nusselt number value using this correlation. So then use the regular HL by K. You will get the H value. From the H value, again Q is H surface area T wall minus t infinity i hope you can do this calculation on your own please complete this problem and do this calculation now if you imagine that the entire boundary layer that the entire boundary layer is turbulent is turbulent so the appropriate correlation for that situation is present in page number 114 so let me write that also so that when you get a situation like that you can just solve it so if the entire turbulent if the entire boundary layer is turbulent so page number 114 for turbulent fully turbulent from leading edge so equation number 1.4.1 .1. so you can just check out so Nusselt number is 0 0.037 uh, Reynolds number to the power of 0 0.8 Prandtl number to the power of 0.33 that is 1 by 3 based on length so this correlation you use for the sake of uh, calculation so use both of these correlations calculate Q in this case also and just check out the difference that you get in the value of Q so you might get a problem in the examination asking you to do the same they might ask you to consider that the boundary layer is turbulent and calculate the heat transfer and find out the difference that you get or the error that you will uh, introduce due to assumption that the entire boundary layer is turbulent you can just do it here in this problem itself uh, you can add it into the question also okay so i hope uh, this is clear so whenever there is what are the takeaways from this problem whenever there is very high fluid velocity and the length of the plate is small so you have to calculate and see whether the critical length is substantial compared to the length of the plate if the flow is turbulent so if the flow is laminar then there is no need to do this calculation at all if the flow if the boundary layer turns out to be turbulent check for the critical length and see that uh, uh, see whether its value when compared to the length scale that you have considered or the characteristic length that you have considered is substantial or not if substantial consider that it's a mixture of laminar and turbulent boundary layer and use the appropriate correlation otherwise use a fully turbulent flow correlation okay so this is about the solution of this problem now let us move on to problem number six so problem six and seven uh, deal with uh, flow over a cylinder and flow over a sphere okay so let me read out the problem so the problem goes like this a hot wire probe is five millimeters in length 10 micrometer in diameter 10 micrometer diameter wire with an electrical resistance of 150 ohm per meter so first of all it's uh, useful to know what is a hot wire probe so it is actually 
uh, used uh, in the measurement of uh, velocity of air. Uh, it's called hot wire anemometry. So the principle here is you will have a small wire uh, of a very conductive metal and uh, when air flows over this uh, small element so you know that uh, heat is lost due to convection so if you maintain the temperature of the wire at a constant value then you need to supply some additional electrical energy to compensate for the loss of heat due to convection and this additional electrical energy that you will be supplying to maintain the surface temperature of the wire at a constant value will actually indicate the velocity of air. So this is a very uh, accurate uh, way of measuring velocity of air and it is utilized in experimental uh, methods uh, to determine uh, the exact values of air velocity. The wire is maintained at a constant temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. If the probe is kept in the in an air stream flowing at 10 meter per second and at one bar 25 degrees Celsius so pressure is not actually uh, uh, useful in the calculation so it's just uh, given as an indication determine the current required to maintain the wire temperature at 50 degree Celsius okay so let us try to obtain a solution let me go back to the whiteboard okay yeah so let me draw the problem so you have a small diameter wire okay uh, length of the wire is given so this is given in the problem so l is 5 millimeter also the wire diameter is given d this is 10 microns 10 micrometer so air is uh, flowing over the wire so the velocity of air free stream velocity is 10 meter per second and temperature of air is also given so this is 25 degree celsius so you are supposed to maintain the wire surface temperature that is T wall so at 50 degree Celsius so what is the problem here you need to estimate how much current is required to accomplish this task of maintaining the wire temperature at 50 degree Celsius in spite of the air flow over the wire and the subsequent uh, loss of heat due to convection okay so let us uh, solve this problem uh, this step one is uh, again the same that we have adopted so step one fluid properties fluid properties at film temperature tf so which is given by t infinity plus tw by 2 so this is 37 point 5 degree Celsius for this problem okay now what you will do so from the data handbook page number 34 properties of air okay so you need to note down the values one thing you will observe here is you don't have the ready set of values at this temperature so you have the values at t is equal to 30 and 40 so what you will do now you employ linear interpolation linear interpolation and interpolate the values of uh, density dynamic viscosity prandtl number and thermal conductivity so here to reduce the computational effort what you can do is instead of noting down density and uh, dynamic viscosity you can just note down the kinematic viscosity because this is mu by rho and in the Reynolds number equation you can just replace mu and rho with uh, kinematic viscosity and uh, uh, you can easily obtain the uh, result okay so now let us 
uh, note down the values I'll just uh, write the values so you do the linear interpolation and uh, check out whether you get the same uh, results that uh, I am writing now uh, the uh, kinematic viscosity will be around 16.7 into 10 power minus 6 uh, meter square per second Prandtl number is 0.706 thermal conductivity is 0 0.02704 watt per meter kelvin so these are the values you get okay so what is step 2 this is step 1 so step 2 is again calculation of Reynolds number so here you should make a qualitative distinction between the flow over a flat plate and flow over a cylinder so what is that in flow over a flat plate so your characteristic dimension was length L if flow was in this direction you consider the Reynolds number calculation based upon the length of the plate now for flow over a cylinder you have to replace this with diameter so now red with respect to diameter so let us calculate red by mu so this is same as by nu by nu so substitute the values if you do the calculation so you will be getting 5.988 this is the value of Reynolds number obviously uh, the critical Reynolds number is around 2 into 10 raised to 5 for flow over a cylinder so what is your conclusion laminar boundary layer so you have a laminar boundary layer okay now the correlation that is uh, used to solve uh, flow over a flat plate the correlation for Nusselt number so it is available in page number 116 this is step 3 step 3 to find the Nusselt number the correlation is like this Nusselt number with respect to diameter so this is the average value only so is some constant into Reynolds number to the power of some m into Prandtl number to the power of 0.333 and there is a table based on the value of your Reynolds number so he has tabulated the constant and uh, the power m so substitute the appropriate value based upon your Reynolds number value that you have calculated okay so if you do that the correlation will be somewhat like this 0.911 Reynolds number to the power of 0.385 so this is the value of constant that you will get Prandtl number to the power of 1 by 3 0.333 okay using this correlation now calculate the Nusselt number so if you do the calculation so let me give you the numerical value that you will be getting one second let me erase all this yeah okay uh, the Nusselt number value Nusselt number with respect to D the average value so this is 1.615 okay you know that Nusselt number is average heat transfer coefficient into D by K so this is also very important for flow over the flat plate the characteristic dimension was length L now we will be replacing it with diameter of the wire D so D is given so D is equal to 10 micrometer so substitute for D K is noted down from the table at the start of the problem so substitute all those values so your H value will be 4.37 into 10 raised to 3 so even though the Nusselt number is very very small uh, uh, the value is just 1.61 due to the very small diameter of the wire the heat transfer coefficient is very high it's extremely high 
is 4.37 kilowatt per meter squared Kelvin. Okay. Now this is the value of heat transfer coefficient. Now estimate. So what is the heat loss? To estimate the heat loss Q. So this is nothing but H bar surface area into T wall minus T infinity. This is from Newton's law of cooling. Okay. Substitute your values. And uh, what is the surface area? Surface area is, how do you estimate surface area for a cylinder? It's just, let me erase all this. Yeah. Okay. So surface area is pi DL, circumference of the wire into length of the wire. So length of the wire is 5 millimeter, convert it into meter. Diameter is 10 microns, 10 micrometer. So convert everything into basic units. So that is pi into 10 power minus 5 into 5 into 10 power minus 3. So this is uh, your area. Substitute everything. So you will get Q to be equal to 0 0.0172 watts. This is the heat that is lost due to convection from the surface of your uh, hot wire. Now, what is the actual problem? You have to estimate how much current is required to maintain the temperature at 50 degrees Celsius, uh, the wire surface temperature at 50 degrees. So how to do that? So since this is the heat lost, so you should equate this to the electrical uh, heat. So how to do that? So you know that Q is also equal to V into I. Okay. So power that is. So this is nothing but I squared into R because V is I into R. So resistance of the wire is already given in the problem. This is 150 ohm per meter he has given. So since the length is 5 millimeter, 5 into 10 power minus 3 meter. So this is the resistance of your wire. Substitute that here. So I will be 0.151 ampere. So this is the final answer for your problem. Okay. So what is the inference that you can draw? If you supply 0.151 amps, so your wire surface temperature will be consistently maintained at 50 degree Celsius when air at 10 meter per second flows over your wire, the temperature of the air being 25 degree Celsius. So this is the uh, solution to the problem. Okay. Now let us proceed to the last problem of uh, external flow uh, section. So problem number seven, let me read the problem. He says air stream at 30 degrees Celsius moving at 0.3 meter per second across a 100 watt incandescent bulb. So he is, you have to visualize an incandescent bulb which is glowing at 130 degree Celsius. Okay. So you know that losses from the incandescent bulbs are uh, very high because of, uh, we will estimate it in this problem only. You can just uh, uh, see that. If the bulb is approximated by a 60 centimeter diameter sphere, so you are approximating your uh, incandescent bulb as a sphere, estimate the heat transfer rate and the percentage of power lost due to convection. Okay. Use the correlation. Nusselt number is equal to 0.37. Reynolds number raised to 0.6. So, in your semester examination also, the correlation to calculate Nusselt number may be given uh, in the problem itself. So, you need not refer to the handbook for the correlation. If that is given in the problem, you just use it. And also sometimes if a fluid is given in the problem whose properties are not available in the data handbook, so they might give the property values of density, uh, etc. directly in the problem itself as a small table. So then you utilize that table and solve your problem. Okay. 
so now let us quickly uh, solve this problem so let me go back to that whiteboard okay so you have a sphere now so air is flowing past your sphere uh, u infinity is 0.3 meter per second and temperature of air is 30 degree celsius the surface is maintained at 130 degree celsius okay uh, what else is given that's all nestled number correlation is given 0.37 into reynolds number raised to 0.6 so this is the correlation that he has specified that you have to use in this problem okay this is a very straightforward problem step one what is step one same again step one fluid properties properties at tf so in this case it is let me write it by 2 130 plus 30 by 2 80 160 by 2 80 degrees celsius so all the property values are directly available density is 1 kg per meter cube same page uh, mu is 21.08 into 10 power minus 6 Prandtl number is 0 0.692 and uh, conductivity is 0 0.03 zero four seven watt per meter kelvin okay now step two finding the reynolds number again the characteristic dimension similar to the cylinder will be diameter rho v d by mu so this will be around if you do the calculation eight fifty three point double eight nine so this is the value of Reynolds number. So you need not comment on whether the flow is laminar or turbulent because um, he has specified that you should use some correlation to calculate Nusselt number. Just use that correlation and uh, finish off your problem. So okay, that means to say that there is no selection of correlation, so which requires some uh, comment on the Reynolds number value. So let us directly use it. So Nusselt number is 0 0.37 into Reynolds number raised to 0 0.6 so this will be around 21.23 which is equal to the average heat transfer coefficient by k so h value will turn out to be uh, 10.7 sorry this is 10 let me erase it Ten point seven eight three watt per meter squared Kelvin. So, which implies the heat loss rate Q is H. What is the surface area? Four pi r square into delta T. So, substitution will yield twelve point one nine six watts. What is this actually? So this is the heat that is lost by the uh, surface of your incandescent bulb due to air flow, due to convection from the surface. Now since you are supplying 100 watts, so you are losing 12 watts of it as uh, a loss. So you just calculate how much uh, percentage of energy that you are losing. I think that uh, you can uh, do that last portion. So with this, let us conclude our discussion on external flow forced convective heat transfer. Let us quickly uh, summarize what we have discussed in this section. So we took up external uh, uh, flow and we started uh, the section with a discussion on the hydrodynamic and thermal boundary layers. Later we saw the simplification of boundary layer theory and uh, we noted the equations of Navier-Stokes and energy equation with the boundary layer simplification. 
Later, we went into the solution of the energy equation inside the thermal boundary layer. And we took up three typical cases. One was Prandtl number equals one, uh, which uh, actually yielded uh, the analogy between momentum transfer and uh, heat transfer, which is popularly known, uh, known as Reynolds analogy. Later, we took up limiting cases of Prandtl number uh, when it is very less uh, uh, than one and when it is very large. So uh, both corresponding to cases of liquid metals and uh, highly viscous oils. And we noted that the Nusselt number expression will vary as a square root of Reynolds number in both cases. But for liquid metals, it varies as the square root of Prandtl number. And for uh, viscous oil, it varies as the cube root of Prandtl number. Prandtl number raised to 1 by 3. So these were some salient observations that we made. Later, we have solved some uh, numerical examples related to external flow situations on flow over a flat plate and also flow over uh, a cylinder and a sphere. Okay. I urge you to solve few more worked examples uh, from your texts or unsolved examples to gain confidence uh, in the examination and also refer to some previous semester question papers and try to uh, solve such problems and if you have any doubts you can always uh, contact me write to me and i'll try to uh, solve it for you okay thank you in the next class in the next session we can start with internal flow force convective heat transfer